so uh, yes uh, so sorry for the last lecture uh, the code i posted it online uh, so uh, the demo hacking code uh, that got deleted during the class so uh, it's online now so so today we are, today we are releasing two things uh, one is the final project uh, uh, details about final project and uh, then we'll talk a bit about uh, first homework uh, which will be released tonight and uh, and then we'll go into image degradation and uh, and inverse filters okay first uh, about the final project so uh, there's a, there's a list of papers that are posted in this uh, in this link which i'll post this link on online so you can go there so which is exactly this website uh, so here uh, there are some instructions in the first page which i'll explain now uh, and there are a list of papers uh, below like around 40 or something papers uh, so there, there, uh, there will be mentioned if if they have code there. I'll 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 link it uh, link it along with the paper. So uh, so f uh, so yeah. So so okay. So first uh, I'll explain what to do in the project, and then we'll talk about deadlines. Uh, so basically, it's, it is to uh, all the papers that I posted are basically released in the last year or uh, a year and a half or some some are two three years. But uh, they're all uh, they're all really uh, state of the art papers, and uh, so uh, so our goal is to uh, so basically what what you have to do first is you have to go to this. Uh, I I gave a comment access uh, for this uh, doc, so you basically go there and uh, you choose. Uh, so you just uh, select select the paper you want to uh, take and uh, uh, just for, uh, and just uh, add a comment with using this, uh, saying you and your partner's name, uh, so that. Uh, so, uh, so, so that's how you basically uh, uh, book the paper. Uh, sorry. Uh, yes, yes, yes. It's out of the. Yeah, it's not really a bonus. Basically, uh, something, something beyond. Uh, so the MVP is be, it's very uh, it's very easy. That's why the bonus. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, so probably I'll change the name. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'll talk to Alex about it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so b b if you want to do something uh, other than these papers, you can also email the paper that you want to read, which it just have to be relevant to the course. And we'll, once we approve it, uh, then then you can you can take whatever you want. And if you want to, if you want to do anything which is not relevant to the paper, but still relevant to relevant to any paper, but it's still relevant to the course, it's also fine. Just uh, confirm with us before, uh, so that uh, we we know that you're doing that. Uh, and uh, yeah, so basically, comment comment your you and your partner's name uh, on this uh, uh, sele by selecting a paper, and uh, that's how you book it. And so yeah, uh, try not to have collisions, uh, not multiple groups choosing the same paper. Uh, so it's uh, so that it's productive for all of us. So uh, there's this uh, minimum viable project that we're trying this time. So uh, so uh, the instructions for this is basically once you choose a paper, you find the papers around it. Like it's not really uh, most of the papers are related to each other. So just find out the relevant papers around it and read the read the surrounding literature like two three papers maybe uh, and then you'll understand what what exactly this particular work is contributing to uh, and uh, and then you have to uh, so uh, most of the papers here are mentioned the uh, mentioned code right so which is where i'll add the links to the code so you have uh, you have the paper you have the code that you can directly look the implementation for and then you can think of uh, you can probably try to run it and see how it works and uh, so uh, most of the papers have code so which is a good thing so it will give you more understanding uh, so so uh, yeah so it, and and finally you should submit as uh, the a final report which consists of uh, basically introducing the problem statement the problem that is that this paper is tackling and uh, giving a summary of the surrounding works uh, the radius as we mentioned uh, and uh, and basically anal uh, descrip describing this paper and uh, analyzing analyzing its flaws if you can uh, and basically uh, saying uh, uh, 
uh, and, and write a critical review. I mean, if it's bad, say it's bad, and why it is bad, uh, and and uh, and probably f try to find uh, limitations of this work, and uh, uh, and uh, if you can propose ways to elevate them, if you can uh, find ways to uh, extend them, that is a limitation. So this is MVP. Should be uh, it should be doable. I mean, it's uh, not too much because since uh, um, most of the papers are. Uh, pretty incremental so you can find uh, you can even easily find the limitations and all so bonus is uh, if you want to uh, so let's say uh, here you're just proposing what how what should what should you do to elevate them but bonuses if you if you can actually show some improvement or uh, or if you actually implement some improvement and probably it doesn't improve that much so it's still fine and anything creative is fine uh, just the 10 percent for that and uh, the, sp the split is a uh, 30 percent ah, yeah. and there's a final presentation where you'll give uh, on the last class uh, which is on 20th January uh, if I'm not wrong uh, some somewhere around that uh, so uh, in that class you will basically present the chosen paper and explain what it does and uh, uh, and propose I mean or uh, explain your analysis uh, it, it doesn't have to be full fully uh, fully ready because you have the deadline on February 15th so by then it should be fully ready but a preliminary version uh, you should be presenting at least uh, what the paper does uh, so the split is like this and and the and the dates are this uh, so 30th November but in 10 days you basically will be choosing your papers and uh, I'll put this link online so you can already start commenting to uh, uh, choose it and uh, 20th January will be the presentation day. Uh, probably will extend by one more hour the main lecture. So, uh, and if if you have anything else, on then you can tell us, and we'll schedule the talks accordingly. Uh, and February 15th is when you turn in the final report. Uh, it, it tell me if it's colliding with your exams or something, so we can we can shift the dates uh, accordingly. Uh, but preferably in February, yeah. So yeah, and then choose. Uh, you have several topics: uh, image restoration, image powers, uh, all, all these stuff, like all all the latest stuff that you have in the field. And uh, there's uh, they're also quite diverse. So and they're also cool papers. Uh, personally, I've at least uh, read them, and I think they're cool. That's why they put them there. Uh, so so that's it. Uh, that's it about the project. Do you have any questions? Uh, Okay, so now uh, the homework, uh, the first homework. So we're, this is the first homework. It's not completely ready, but it will be ready by tonight. Uh, <laughs> so this this has a uh, so this w w this will be out uh, by tonight, and the deadline is uh, deadline is one month from now, 19 December uh, tonight uh, midnight. So it has both uh, dry and wet parts. Uh, so uh, the question uh, I'll elaborate more on the description and then. Uh, uh, and, and upload it by tonight. So you have one month. You have sufficient time, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the submission is in pairs for both the projects and uh, and the homeworks. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it. Anything important? Uh, one month from now, December nineteenth. Okay, that's it. Yeah. So today we'll talk about uh, mostly about image restoration. Uh, actually, I'm partially lying because we'll talk about image degradation first, and we'll uh, pose uh, some what is called as an inverse problem, and we'll see one simple way to uh, solve it today. Which uh, uh, since Alex didn't teach you uh, this Wiener filter, which is which was uh, uh, towards the end. So I, I'll, I'll uh, so we'll see Wiener filter in the next class, but we'll see some. Um, some uh, some uh, some common degradations that can happen to image in uh, in a real life imaging system and and we'll see one way to elevate them okay so 
So yeah, so until now we've seen uh, very simple uh, frequency domain filtering and uh, spatial domain filtering and we saw some cool uh, applications of Fourier transform on how to, uh, how it is used for uh, let's say a computer tomography and and then we saw the what problems can actually arise when you're converting uh, continuous signal from uh, discrete signal and uh, and how the aliasing can occur and uh, what are the results of this aliasing and how to avoid them and how do you resample signals? Let's say you are converting some from one sampling rate to another. So how do you do it efficiently? Uh, so today we'll, from now we'll, uh, I mean, forever we've been discussing only discrete. So we'll still continue with that, and we'll not, uh, we'll, we'll cross the sampling, and and now we'll uh, today from today we'll focus on uh, what kind of. Uh, what kind of degradations can happen to image? Uh, so uh, basically, all the image processing research is basically you get a you get a dirty image and you want to make it cleaner. Uh, it can be dirty in many ways, which uh, which is why we're discussing these things. Uh, so we'll discuss a few few types of noise which can occur due to various reasons and the reasons why they occur, uh, and then uh, a, few, uh, a different type of uh, uh, noise which can noise or degradation that can occur is a uh, blur it can it can occur in a couple of ways so we'll see that and then we'll see a simple way to remove this blur okay so uh, so first ad additive gaussian noise basically you have an image you're adding uh, you're, you're adding a, 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 a noise with uh, sample uh, with uh, zero mean and some uh, small sample uh, small standard deviation uh, so which remembers me I did something wrong here yeah so uh, so basically you, you choose uh, so uh, so how do how can you code uh, uh, so let me correct it just a second Yeah, so uh, so then one of the ways to uh, one of the ways to uh, that 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 a Gaussian noise can enter your system is when you let's say let's say you compress your image and then you uh, and then you send through a transmission line through somewhere else and and somebody else gets the image and then they decompress it their phone. Uh, so what kind of uh, noise that can occur through these transmission lines is uh, is is it's uh, it's been observed that it's uh, Gaussian noise. It, I mean it can be very well approximated with Gaussian. It's not exactly Gaussian, but uh, but yeah, re one uh, th that way you can uh, you can actually get Gaussian noise to the image, and we'll see a lot of stuff uh, from now on that will try to remove this Gaussian noise from an image uh, through several ways. So one bad thing about this Gaussian noise is because if you you can't just remove it by doing uh, uh, frequency domain filtering, for example, because uh, when you add something in uh, special domain, it also adds in the frequency domain. So you so it's it's as it's exactly as difficult to remove it in the frequency domain as it is in the in the special domain. So uh, so we uh, so we, we uh, so we we try to design some kind of uh, uh, I mean uh, until now what we saw was we saw that a simple uh, uh, if you apply a simple Gaussian filter or uniform filter it can remove this Gaussian noise but uh, but you will lose the details in the image so we'll see how to uh, basically this is how to uh, how to add noise in the image so I I just choose this function called uh, np dot random dot normal. So, which uh, which uh, which is uh, and I gave it uh, a mean and a standard deviation. So I gave it the mean of zero. Uh, why I changed the code before was it was uh, since since it was a noise with very small standard deviation. So and my when my dynamic range of the image was huge, so it was it's difficult to notice it. That's why I changed it. So uh, even now it's difficult, but slightly better. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, so he, you give it a, you give it a mean and a variance and the size. So it gives you a matrix of a, ma a matrix like this, and then you add it to the image. So we do this because uh, since we want to check if our algorithms work, we assume that the underlying image is clean, and we add it, we add noise and other stuff to the signal, and and then we try to remove it. So so this is uh, this is how you add it 
uh, and uh, Gaussian noise and the, some other noise that can occur is uh, salt and pepper noise. We, we basically, it's uh, at random places, it just goes zero or one. So it can happen due to uh, if you have a faulty equipment, like if some, some sensors in the image are not working or some sensors or let's say some uh, some sensors are, uh, are soon, uh, over, what do you call it? You They exceed the, if, you, if too much light falls on uh, and if it's not sensitive enough, uh, and, and the sensor is not sen sensitive enough, then you can get these kind of uh, random black and white dots uh, at, at different places. How you can, uh, uh, I mean, in a real life system, you don't know where the noise is originating from. So you just, uh, so we're just trying to find ways to simulate them. And so uh, we'll discuss uh, several of those. So, so basically, I'm choosing, uh, I'm choosing the probability between salt and pepper. I call salt as white and pepper as black, like they exist. Uh, so uh, and uh, and I'm adding uh, n I'm on number of uh, proportion of the pixels to to be have to be having this stuff. So um, so basically I'm just uh, I'm just going to every image and then I'm checking the probability and I'm generating a random integer between either zero or one and then I put I, I put that value there. Uh, so basically it looks like this. If you can notice that there are some black dots, uh, black and white dots uh, at different places. So so, so, so point zero zero four percent of the pixels uh, have the, so, yeah. So one other type of noise, and it's an uh, interesting noise, and imp also important is uh, is the Poisson noise. Bas uh, so uh, it is. Uh, Basically, uh, it's not an additive noise. First thing, you can't just generate a Poisson noise and add it to the image. You just it just uh, happens uh, happens inherently. You just have to push the image through a Poisson process, and you what what you get out is a is a Poisson image, a uh, Poisson noise image. So this is a very common noise. Uh, this is a I mean this is an important noise and also difficult to tackle because most of the methods that are proposed uh, work work very well for Gaussian noise, but po for Poisson noise it it doesn't work so well because uh, and and also the Poisson noise is also uh, very common because uh, in, in low light conditions when you click images the kind of noise that it, that you get there is uh, Poisson and and recently it's the people are working on it but it's not so common and it's many people do it wrong they think that the po you have to add the Poisson noise but actually I'll show you how to uh, how to add it I mean how to get a Poisson noise image. So basically, it's, it's, uh, it means this. Uh, so at, at every pixel you go, if it has a value lambda, you get uh, you get a value m uh, with this probability. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, so for example, uh, every and for and every y i is an integer. So let's say you have uh, you have values between zero and one. You zero to uh, your lambda is be between is quasi continuous between zero and one. So uh, you get you get uh, each each uh, yi is a probability that uh, that that this pixel is uh, is exciting. So uh, so a, a large xi. I mean, if you have large values of uh, lambda, you get la large values. And but if it affects more if you have small values of lambda. So if you so that's why uh, that's why it, it emulates well the low light condition because you have more noise in the low low light regions than the than the high than the well lit li well lit regions. So, uh, so how I simulate this is as follows. Uh, so I choose a peak. So uh, you can give it, for example, thirty. So uh, and then uh, what I'm doing is uh, basically I'm I'm just taking a, I, I get the image and I. I, I reshape it. It's not since it's not structured. I can just uh, I can just uh, stack it into a single column, and I can send it through this uh, function. It's uh, it generates a random process, uh, uh, random Poisson process from this uh, fr from the from the from the series of values that we give. So it it basically converts uh, this kind of distribution into uh, I'll show you which is, I'll show you the one which is more evident. It basically converts this kind of uh, Distribution of pixels and it slams them into a uh, uh, very uh, very small interval. So so here is a well lit image and you get the uh, the uh, Poisson valued image. So it's not Gaussian, it's uh, it's Poisson. So uh, so the the way how to implement this is important. So uh, so because uh, you can face it in some of the papers that you take up because recently it's very famous. Uh, so. Well, you choose a maximum value and you you maintain your image between zero and one, and you basically take a, and then you want to uh, and then you want to scale it uh, and then you want to scale it up to this uh, particular 
a value of 30. I mean, it can leak outside 30, but still, uh, uh, you you kind of give a uh, give a give a give a peak to which uh, the values can occur, and and basically you just uh, send it into uh, send it as your lambda into this function, and and just reshape it back when you get it. So. So that's it, and if you if you increase the if you increase your peak value, so you, it's, uh, the noise will be very less apparent. Let's say I put to fifty, so so it's not uh, converting uh, the distribution too much, although it does. But uh, see, you see some noise, but not much, and it can it can emulate well the low light uh, the noise that you, that occurs in low light conditions. So yeah. So one other degradation that can occur, uh, but, and it doesn't, it's not additive or it's not occurring due to a random process, is focal blur. We saw a few times uh, in the past, basically when you have, a, when you, in your camera, you have a ideal PSF like this. So if you have, if you have PSF, which is, which is not as, if your, if your camera is not focusing as much, that is, if you don't have a, uh, if you don't have a single white pixel in the in the big in the middle, uh, or you have a, a little little more than white pixel, then basically uh, then you get some kind of a blur. Here, what's happening is uh, you have uh, um, um, uh, this. What this function creates is a uh, is uh, I'll show you. So here I'm generating a Gaussian kernel with, uh, um, wait a second. Yeah, so with a, with a sigma one, so you can't really control it at a pixel level when I give a sigma, but so this is a, this has the maximum value at the center and it has a, it has a dampening uh, distribution like this. So when I, so if, when, when you get such a filter, what, what it means, uh, what it means is basically you're convolving with, with uh, something like this, where you're multiplying with something like this in the Fourier domain. Uh, so you, so this means that you're, so you, you see that the high frequencies, uh, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm doing a shift, so you have the uh, low frequencies in the middle and the high frequencies in, in the corners. So basically you're keeping all the high frequencies and it's kind of, uh, uh, killing all the low frequencies. So now, uh, how how it looks when when I actually convolve with an image is uh, uh, it's like this. Yeah, you see some kind of a blur that is happening. Uh, if you you you're losing details, uh, just. I don't want to run it again because it takes time. So, uh, so it, it, you're, you're losing details, and which is basically multiplying this with the Fourier transform of uh, this image. Uh, so, and I'm showing the same thing here. Yeah. So you can get the same image when you do it. I, I, above, I did it with a function called con2d. Basically, it's convolution 2d from SciPy. Uh, you can also do the same in Fourier domain. Uh, your homework will be based on uh, uh, the following one that I'm saying. Uh, so basically, you, one kind of a blur that can happen is uh, uh, this uh, focal blur. And what else that can happen is uh, if you if you let's say you move your camera a little bit, uh, so you can you can get a different kind of blur. Uh, so basically, in, it was uh, so your your ideal uh, ideal camera PSF is something like this, which which is mostly focused in the center, and then you for every pixel like this. So, but but if if in case uh, if in case your camera moves, uh, for example, let's say it's moving horizontally on uh, on uh, on a on uh, parallel parallel to the parallel to the plane you're imaging. Uh, so basically, I, I, you can emulate such a process by uh, by just. Uh, by something by PSF something like this. So basically, at every at every pixel, uh, when you when you're trying to image every pixel, you have a shift towards uh, uh, you 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 have a you have a shift in the PSF. So your PSF is something like this. Uh, so so what happens at every pixel is it has some information that is from the from the actually that is actually supposed to contain in the in the neighboring pixels. So. Uh, so when you, uh, you, if you want to actually simulate such stuff, you can, you can just, uh, it looks something like this. Um, 
yeah you see uh, you, you get if, if you if you shake your camera a little bit while taking a picture so you can simulate such effects like this and if you put some random trajectories here then you get you get a different kind of uh, image so but what this uh, basically if if you uh, if you, yeah and then i'm showing the same thing uh, like here I, I i took this as a psf and i convolved it uh, using the same way like with the con 2d which is uh, convolution 2d from scipy and you can do the same thing with uh, fourier in in the fourier domain so so yeah so now now what we'll see is uh, let's say uh, ideally we don't know what the good image looks like uh, but what we can know uh, which is also false uh, i mean you can know it sometimes not uh, not all the time what we if we know uh, what kind of a PSF we are, uh, we are uh, is degrading our image? Let's say I knew that my hand was moving like this. So if I can approximate that, uh, uh, if I if I can approximate such a such a PSF, and if I give if I give it to my model, if I ask a model like, okay, I have I have this PSF and I have this image. Can I what can I get back? Uh, can I get back the actual clean image? So. So let's say, let's formulate it like this. Let x i x y be the clean image, and it is degraded by this uh, by this uh, uh, by this blur blur kernel h x y, and you get you're getting i hat right. So uh, so our goal is to now recover this uh, this i when you're given i hat and h right. So let's assume for now uh, that you have no noise, uh, you have no additive noise uh, here that is happening, which which can very well happen in real life scenarios and and now if you want now if you basically if you uh, if you look this in the four year domain it's nothing but this one right uh, i had is basically multiplying h u v with i mean i i had a h with i the four year transform of the kernel with the four year transform of the ideal image so basically what you can do is you can just uh, you can just divide this uh, divide this uh, up the the psf of the uh, no sorry uh, the 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 fft of the uh, of the obtained image the degraded image with this with this filter with this filters uh, psf and you can get a you can expect to get a good image right so this is called as a inverse filtering it is also called as a wiener filtering but but in a noiseless case wiener filter is uh, ideally defined for the noisy case so uh, which we'll see in the next class uh, so let's see uh, let's see how to implement this right uh, so let's say i have a Okay, let's say I have a Gaussian kernel with uh, with what two uh, with uh, with uh, with two sigma. Basically, you have uh, you have uh, you have a center. Uh, you have uh, the peak at the center, and you have uh, two uh, uh, with sigma of two. And now I'm generating this motion. I mean, not this is not exactly motion. This is a wait. Ah, okay. So I'm uh, so let's ignore this for now. So uh, the, then I then I'm I'm creating uh, how how the image were to look like if I if I if I if I convolve with this filter uh, and then uh, I'm you I'm I'm implementing this inverse filter. What what is happening in this inverse filter? So I'm taking I get an input which is the, ideally the degraded image which is I hat uh, and I get the PSF. So one one important thing to notice, uh, which I which I forgot to emphasize on, when you're creating this motion, you have to make sure that you uh, that you normalize the PSF because otherwise you will you will exceed the values. Let's say let's say you don't normalize it and then you convolve with it. So uh, and then you convolve with it, then the values are, let's say the your initial range of values are zero to two fifty five. It will exceed to if your if your kernel value kernels are uh, zero to nine. I mean. Three by three kernel, then basically you're, you're exceeding your values by nine times if you don't uh, if you don't normalize it. So it's a it's an it's a small detail, but it's important. So uh, yeah, so let's say now you get now you have the f and now you have the PSF and uh, you have the you take it to f50 and basically I want to uh, what I want to do is uh, um, I want to divide this uh, uh, as we said here. I want to divide this FFT by this one. I mean, at every element, basically you can treat it like uh, you have ten thousand values of uh, different FFTs, and you can just divide it one by one, right? So, uh, so yeah. So to avoid uh, to avoid numerical issues, I'm just uh, scaling them uh, with the maximum. So basically, all of them are. Uh, between zero to one, and now I'm just dividing them, uh, dividing them with this, uh, and and basically uh, what I'm doing is uh, what am I doing here? 
here. Yeah, so I'm just rescaling it back to its original original scale, and I, and I'm taking an inverse f50, and I'm showing the result, right? So this is the this is the image. This is the PSF. I forgot about this image. Now I take this PSF, and uh, and I know this image is given. Uh, this is i hat. This is h hat, and this is my image. So it you see that it can it can it removes the blur, but the image doesn't look good because you see some high frequency noise. So uh, the reason why this occurs is uh, when I divide this PSF with with uh, with the with the F50 of this PSF with the F50 of this image at the high frequency at the low frequencies it does okay but in the high frequencies you it doesn't you get some numerical issues because you when you divide a small uh, a big enough value with a very small value in the uh, in in the PSF of uh, of the kernel you get uh, you 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 exceed your high frequencies and some and some and it appears like this in the image. If you if you if you observe keenly, then it's, the, it's actually doing the deep blurring, but you can't uh, see the effects, right? So what you what you could rather do to elevate this is basically what what you say is uh, okay. I'll show you. So yeah, so uh, so you this the, you have you had an original F50, uh, which is uh, so. What I'm doing here is okay. Uh, I know I know in the high frequencies. Uh, I might not have such numerical issues, so what I'm doing is just I cut this and I put the filtered version, uh, filtered that is the division of uh, that is the, the the indices where you're dividing it with the PSF in uh, inside the circle and outside the circle I just keep its previous uh, FFT and then I and then I do the inverse FFT. So that's what that's what it is. So after filtering, this is the inside uh, and this is the FFT of the filtered uh, the filtered I hat. Uh, and and I'm 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 only placing it inside the circle, and the rest of the circle I keep the previous FFT that is contained in this one, and then I'm inverting it. And you can choose this radius, of course, which is uh, which I chose here to be hundred, but you can of course choose it other values like thirty maybe. So you see, you're just uh, putting uh, the values inside this to be this one. So and then you get a you get a deep blurred image. If you if I chose it to be thirty, it you still see some high frequency noise, which is happening probably. Uh, Probably due to some uh, some effects that are happening uh, in the region that I didn't cut. So I uh, so the, I played it played with it a little bit and I found that hundred was fine. So so you have this you have this filter right? Like uh, inside this inside this I want to place uh, my filtered values. Okay. So because. Uh, uh, because I assume that blur is kind some kind of a uh, you can remove it using some uh, it it has it has contents in low frequencies so I want to filter that and I don't want to filter the high frequencies. Uh, previously, you see that you get the high frequency noise, right? So I just I just don't want that. So I just uh, put the filtered values inside the circle, and outside the circle I put the values that you had before. Uh, so you have the degraded image, uh, and you you have the Fourier transform of the degraded image. You choose a circle, uh, and you you what whatever whatever things you have inside the circle, you replace it with the filtered value, and outside you remain as it is. So uh, so yeah. So uh, you this is this is one simple way to deal with it, but of course it's uh, it's quite hacky, and you need to play with the parameters to actually find out. And you'll have more of this when you, when you actually implement the Wiener filter because you have some sensitive parameters which should be perfectly tuned to get the performance you want. Uh, so this is a uh, uh, okay. This is my image, and I do the same thing with uh, also the motion blur. So uh, I'm doing uh, what I'm doing is I'm generating a motion process uh, of length seven pixels, and uh, and I'm doing this. Uh, 
and I get the PSF of it, and then I generate a blurred image how it will look like if uh, I convolve it with the, with the kernel, and then I do a deep blurring. See, this is the image, this is the PSF, this is the shaky image, and this is the recovered one. Uh, this, uh, so this is the one which I got through inverse filter uh, without this with, without this circle thing, uh, and it probably this uh, I'm not completely sure, but I think this will uh, for this in this case it doesn't matter so much because my PSF is not circular, uh, and you have uh, you you have uh, contents of uh, that is. Uh, uh, you have when I when I take the F50 of this, it's it's also not circular. It, you don't have small values at the corner, so it doesn't matter so much. But in the previous case, it did because you, our PSF was uh, like this uh, even before. Sorry, our PSF was something like this. So when I mul when I divide with this, here there are very small values that uh, that will matter. Uh, so yeah. So this is my image. This is my blur kernel, and uh, uh, and and I deconvolve it, and I do the same thing with this truncated thing. So th I put I replace the values in here, but it doesn't really matter. You, and you also you can notice that you see some uh, high frequency uh, uh, noise in the frequent for in the frequency domain because you're you're shifting the pixels by uh, uh, you're shifting the pixels by a bit, uh, seven pixels or something. So it knows that uh, okay, you have some periodicity in the in the values that are occurring. Uh, and that's it. And in the next class, we, what we'll see is uh, here. Here we chose a noiseless case, right? In the next class, what we'll see is uh, let's say if we, if our forward model was something like this. Uh, uh, it's something. So let's say a, a forward model was something like this. You have a Gaussian noise here, uh, and and then everything breaks because if you apply the same thing here, and uh, and this and basically you're dividing the noise with uh, the filter. Uh, so no, since the filter is small, it just uh, the noise will get excited, and uh, and you get very high frequency content everywhere in the image. So it's you can't just apply this. You need to uh, do some hack, which is called as a Wiener filter. Uh, Actually, it's the other way. This is a special case of the Wiener filter, and uh, Wiener filter will deal with uh, will uh, in in will deal with all kinds of noises that we face. Okay. Uh, so, so have any questions? Uh,